Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programmes in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a program about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colorful. Maximize the flavor. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimize the risk. So welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. Well, welcome back once again. This is the program, you know, where we do a basic technique once or twice, you know, up in this area, and then come back and visit it again and do some fantastic dish. Okay, well, <laughs> it's supposed to be fantastic. Anyway, today, I'm so glad you're there because they are truly fantastic dishes. Have you ever thought of cooking with wine? You know, and just so it may be somebody in the family has a problem with wine. I don't know, you know. It's a strange bottle, but there we are. Um, the problem with wine can be that if, say, you take that quantity of wine and you cook it in a dish, by the time it evaporates and cooks down, there's very little alcohol left. Some say it's gone altogether. In actual fact, MIT did some tests and they found little traces and sometimes quite large amounts of alcohol, even though cooking had taken place. Now, if that is a problem, if you've got someone in the home or someone who might be visiting and you know it, it's a problem for them, then I think it's a good idea that we go with a wine called de-alcoholized and it's a well, I, I might get a chance to be able to show you just exactly what that's like later on. But for me, I'll tell you why it's important. Because I, I like candy bars. Well, I'm not, I don't eat them anymore. <laughs> well, now and again. Um, when I make tea for my mum, Marty, um, I notice in her refrigerator there is always a candy bar. And, you know, I get this feeling that I would love to get into that candy bar. But I, I don't because she's the only one there and she'd notice that it was gone. So, uh, it's just the same for somebody who's got a problem, who's allergic to alcohol. If you've got alcohol around in the house, it can be a problem for them. So, nobody gets to stumble. We'll have a look and see how all this gets together. Okay, come through and I'll show you how it's done. All right, now, we're, uh, there's a couple of techniques of adding wine to food, which, uh, which I think will be kind of fun for you. And they'll be wrapped up into a recipe, and the recipe is delicious, all right? So this is penne. This is a little um, piece of pasta, about an inch and a half long, tubular and dry, and needs about nine minutes cooking. Now, I put that into some water here, and, um, and just a little, uh, you know, just a touch of salt on the top. And give that a little bit of it. You see how now, if you look down into the pot, they're all going sort of, hi there, hi, isn't this fun? Kind of all around, around the bottom. Well, now, just give them a good mix-up as a crowd. If you don't do that, the chances are they'll stick to the bottom, and that doesn't, you know, aerate them properly, and they don't cook very well. Okay. Over the top of that goes uh, one of these steamer tops, and that, we're going to cook something else in the top there in a moment. Put the lid on and get to the rest of this. Um, pork chops, um, good food, especially about four ounces in weight. And these are four ounces in weight, and they've got a bone in them. And I really had to work it out with myself whether I wanted bone in or bone out. And um, in this case, I decided, oh, let me just, <laughs> just a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan first, just a teaspoonful, and a bristle brush, and, uh, and just spread it over the bottom. Look at that, isn't it? Amazing. That's what happened if you jumped into the pan. You'd leave a bit of you behind, just like that. All right. Um, just move it around in the pan first. That's a good way to stop that from happening. And um, so I want to know whether to put a bone in or out. You've probably seen the bone loin, you know, which is usually tied up as a little roast um, in supermarkets nowadays. Very popular. Well, I decided to keep the bone in because... Um, at least it increases the portion size. It doesn't look quite so miserable. And it's also something to gnaw on, you know, if you give your guests permission to bite the bone. I know we love doing that when we're on our own, Trina and I, so left it in. So just let's turn that over so that we've got the first side down and then just flip it for the second side. And then that can just um, uh, cook around there. That's quite a hot pan, actually. That's the reason why that's fixing. Good. 
OK, carrots are going to go in this dish. And um, there's a, an intriguing way of preparing carrots, which is called julienne. And I just want to keep that to one side and show this to you. Now, to do a julienne of carrot with, with a knife, you simply have to start off by chewing a, a piece off from the side and then rolling it over so it has a flat base to it. And then another little piece, because you want to keep it nice and trim, and another piece the other side, OK? And you need a good sharp knife for this. Now, then you lay it on one side like so, and then cut right down hard like that until you get these, what, what are called really matchsticks. Now, those don't look much like matchsticks, but you see, then you stack them one on top of the other and then cut them through like that. You put the, the tip of the knife blade down and then just press down hard like that. And you make these fabulous little pieces of carrot, OK? Now, that can take you all day. <laughs> there is a machine which does this for you. And I went to the very top of the tree. I don't know who makes this and, uh, and everything else, but I do know that it costs $200. So I thought you might like to see what a $200 machine looks like. This is called a mandolin. And so you put these into this little box, and this has got little studs on the top here, and they fix down on top of the thing. <laughs> you always feel like you want to be with NASA or something. So you, just, you, you hold this um, at the bottom, and you pull it up. <laughs> $200. <laughs> One, two, 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 two. You notice I told you that I didn't know who made it, and which is probably just as well. Um, it's going back, but I mean, it was fun, you must admit. So um, you could also have other carrots in smaller shape if you didn't want to go to that trouble. Good, which you probably won't now. Um, here is the, <laughs> isn't this fun? Um, so we then turn over the pork chops once again. Oh, look, that's, that, they're going just nicely now. I wanted to get some color in them. And then, in addition to the julienne of, <laughs> of the... <laughs> there, are, there are other less expensive machines which seem to work all right. Um, and this is cut up into nice pieces that look like that, because not only for texture but also appearance, they, they look really attractive in the finished dish. And I've got eight of those which go into the dish. I always give you all the numbers, at least I try to, and so I hope if you write them down, and if you can't, then you know there's the book to back you up. All right. Um, beans on the side, a little, that's, everything is fine. Okay. Now, when this is done, this is the first time that I'm going to use one of the techniques of adding wine. And this is what happens. So you take the, uh, the pork out, and there in the bottom of the pan is, of course, a certain amount of fat which has come from the pork as it's been uh, cooking. And then on the bottom of the pan there, you've got a residue. All right, now I always save these, I've told you before. I save those, put them in a little plastic bag and do my thing. Um, I use them as a fire lighter, by the way. Now, into the bottom of the pan there goes a cup of Chardonnay. This is the dealkalized Chardonnay. So it's just like any other great wine, you know, just perfect. Just fine. <laughs> You've got jaws like this, I know. And just, just shovel that around and get that, deglaze that off the bottom of the pan. Just, there's none of that meat juice left whatsoever. It, you, it did grip, but now it's gone. Right? And into that as well, um, a similar matching quantity of chicken stock. Right? Then you just simply slip the, the chops back in again. So you've got to get them out in order to get, to get the stuff off the pan. Right? Now, settle those in and get the julienne of, <laughs> roughly julienne. I did this earlier on, and they came out quite nicely, really. It's just when you're there. Um, so here, is the, here are the carrots all the way around. And there, there are just four carrots there, and those mushrooms. And they're all just, just sort of push it down. Don't <coughs> press too hard because you'll burn yourself. But those will actually fall down into the dish that they're doing. And then take the outside zest of an orange, you know, the outside peel of the orange, and just cut very thin strips of it with a sharp knife and just sprinkle that over the top. Gorgeous, fantastic flavor that goes into food. And this is thyme, if you've got it. Um, this is just variegated thyme, and uh, it's lemon thyme. The lemon thyme has a distinct and great flavor. So just several branches of that spread over the top. 
and lid on the surface and lid off here and on top. You remember that's where we put the, the penne, the pasta? Just put on, just for a couple of minutes, um, some beautiful fresh string beans. And then on top of that little nutmeg, nutmeg on beans is gorgeous. And a little freshly ground pepper and they will be a sensation with the pasta almost ready at the end. Okay, Three, uh, 400 degree Fahrenheit oven, which is 205 degrees centigrade, if you can find it on the thing. Um, so that has to have a, um, obviously, um, a handle which will stand up to that. So do check with the manufacturer that yours has a handle that will do it. Mine does. Um, so at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, hi, oh, ho. Oh, oh. Um, and it's out. <laughs> and here, look. Of course, it's boiling rather vigorously because the heat's high underneath it. Um, so that's good. Now, all you have to do now is to take some more of the shani. This is the second technique of adding wine. One, two, about two ounces of wine there. It's called the last minute splash. So this, the wine has been cooking in here, you see, which is the braise and it's soaked up into the vegetables and into the rest of it. But this is added where you push it to one side and then add an arrowroot glaze. That's just arrowroot added to the rest of that. Now you see how milky it goes for a moment? Just for a moment though. Because as it stirs around, that becomes a glaze in the whole of that dish. And it doesn't take long for that to work perfectly. It's just back, ooh, oh, that's the thing I was going to tell you. When you put that oven in, they were cold. <laughs> if you do hold over the handle, do it quickly. And just leave a cloth over that to make sure that you don't do what I just did. So now, let's get the plate. <laughs> it's not, not like that bad. All right, all right. And now, up we come. Um, the pork chop on the plate there, and then the vegetables and the lemon. I mean, the way that those vegetables look, I hope you can see the glaze like I'm seeing it here. That glaze is phenomenal, and it's a wine glaze with those mushrooms in it. See how those mushrooms look there? Oh, smashing, lovely. And then um, just uh, pick up the freshly cooked beans on the side. Don't those look good? And that goes off the top, and you see, with just one lot of, of heat, you're able to then pick up and serve the penne pasta as a little garnish on the side. How does that look? All right? There's just a little bit of fresh thyme that I can uh, dust on the top, which comes up and looks great. Good. Thanks awfully. I don't know why. Who am I thanking? Me. All right, let's go and have a look at the numbers. Um, over here. There we go. Hello, old friend. Um, well, that's what we were trying to do, find some ways of adding wine so that you've got that extraordinary aroma there, but at the same time, to, as always, to try and reduce the fat. So I'm going to compare this with a pork chop which is glazed with Gruyere. So this obviously tumbles down, say about 400. Um, and uh, fat is 11 instead of 45, which is good. Saturated fat is only 3 from 21. Percentage of calories from fat is 25% for a nice pork chop. 79 in cholesterol, 177 for sodium, and 5, the dreaded 5, for fibre. <laughs> My chance to have a nosh. And just a little bit of that pork chop. It's so, it becomes so incredibly tender. It looks great. Oh, look, snow white. Oh, oh, I love that wine glaze on it. It's sweet, and yet the tanginess of that lemon, uh, the orange zest, and, and that variegated lemon thyme is great. Mmm. Oh. Vegetables are crisp and colorful. All right. Now. Oh. <laughs> Good. Well, now, we're going to springboard and do a completely different dish with seafood. Yeah? Very exciting recipe, this next one. A very unusual technique indeed. All right? Come on, let's have a look. Good. That's nice. 
Okay, this is a halibut dish and it's wonderful. If you've ever heard of steamed fish that you rave about, and you'd say, come on, rave about steamed fish. Well, you see, you see what wine can do. Um, a little grated zest of lemon. Um, that's just the outside of lemon with a fine grater. Just put that over the top. It's rather a neat thing. And then I've got in this boiling away vigorously here. You see, there's not too much liquid. If you look down in there, if you could actually see with all that steaming stuff. And I've got what looks like a hubcap. It isn't. Um, it's, it's actually a very interesting steamer. So you put it in to the top there like that. So it's a stainless steel perforated base to it. And you see how the fish is standing upright. Now I need to get a full six minutes of steaming going here. Put it on so that it's a vigorous boiling steam and it's on the go. All right. Now for the rest of this dish. First of all, in the bottom of the water with that, um, and this is quite an invention, uh, you've got branches of dill, just two branches of fresh dill, which is a marvellous flavour. And then bay leaf, three cloves, and a little clump of fresh thyme. Right? And it would be nice if it was fresh thyme. Always fresh herbs if you could possibly do it. And that is put down in the water and brought to the boil. So that, Now, it's not just steam that's going up, but it's aromatic steam as well, with the herbs on, in top as well. Okay. Uh, on top of that, and there's a kind of bed and vegetable there, uh, a red pepper, especially during the, the time of the year when they're available, you know, at reasonable price. It's really green pepper which has gone red. I suppose you could put it in the sock drawer and whack it together, well anyway. And zucchini, and then a, a yellow crook neck, which is a marvellous little fellow here. You've probably seen cartoon series of them like this. But these are chopped up into very simple little pieces. I don't really need to show it to you. Um, pieces about this size. And they're, they're a little bit different, but they're more or less the same, you know, general shape and size. And so they're ready, and they go into the top. Now, this is a larger kind of stainless steel thing, which sockets down into the other one, but gives enough height to be able to get those halibut standing up on the edge, or pieces of chicken, or whatever. So, put the uh, vegetables on the top just like so, and they, they'll take about six to eight minutes to do, a bit longer, you see how we handle that from here. All right, so then you just lift the one lid and stack and steam. Just put it on the top, that one, is that fine? I suppose you could go on and on forever, well, more or less. Okay, so that's done. Now, we've got a sauce that I'm going to make eventually, but let me show you how this gets together. First of all, out of the bottom, you know, with the herbs that we had in the bottom uh, of the pan there, when um, you, I just strained out some that I'd done earlier. So that's, that's the, the, the end of the herbs, you know, you can chuck them out. But this is the liquid. Now, that's liquid because of perforated bases. As the vegetable juices, as they, as they tighten up, as the heat gets to them, they start to weep a little bit, you know. So would you? <laughs> and they drop down, and it drops down through the fish, and the fish is dropping down into it as well. So it's a combination of all of that. So just pour that into a slightly hot pan and raise the temperature right up because I want it to get nice and hot. And then this is the other way that you can use wine. You just put one, two, three, four, just half a cup. This is a Chardonnay, and Chardonnay is a great you know, wine to put with fish and with light meats. It's a very nice flavor, sort of butterscotchy kind of flavor. And then, uh, just as I did earlier before, I, I need you to boil. I just don't need you just to sit there. Good. Just, you know, let them know what you want to do. And we've got um, a tablespoonful of arrowroot there, and um, actually cornstarch there. And it would be cornstarch. The reason why is because the vegetables that I've got steaming here will be very crisp. And if you remember that, if you put arrowroot with very crisp vegetables, it gets slimy. And that is not a good finish. So it's cornstarch. And so cornstarch mixed with um, the cream is perfect. Now that will just go into that pan there. So just take that off the heat. See the fire's quite high underneath that. And just a little bit of little wooden spoon and always take it off the heat before you add it you know otherwise if you've followed me for a while you know that you get lumps and horrible things so you can see already that it's starting to just boil up when once it's um it's actually received that introduction onto the pan then it can be put onto the pan there and just allowed to get cracking okay now 
there's a couple of ways that you can treat this. I'm not silly now. Do you know, I read a book. Um, actually, I didn't read a book. A friend of mine read a book, so let's be honest about this. Um, where it said that if you talk nicely to plants, and, um, and please write to me if you've got further details about this. If you talk nicely to plants, we have a ficus tree, and, um, and we actually um, shifted home recently, and we talked nicely to it. I packed it up nicely, the U-Haul box and all that stuff, and um, it didn't drop a leaf, not a leaf. I mean, that's an amazing thing. So I talked nicely to you. You look really nice now, Dill. Okay, so we'll see whether it dies. I'll let you know. And then um, you can do that, or you can chop it up with a knife, if you like, and get it from a, a you know, department store. It's already dead, so it's not going to mind. Um, so you've got a good dill base, and the wine and that reduction from the bottom of the steaming is taking place there. Okay, so this is probably getting close to the six minutes now, and um, got one more minute to go. Okay, well... Here on the uh, plate, I've got some rice. And this is um, long grain rice, which has been cooked at the boil um, for 10 minutes and then strained into a strainer like this. And now it's steaming for about five minutes towards the end. And um, getting this out, I might as well start it bit by bit. Uh, here is the rice, then, which I will place on the dish um, over to one side. Never, never completely overwhelm the plate with rice. It should be just nicely done, that's of that nature. Now, the vegetables, look how gorgeous they can be. Those are tumbled onto the plate, and you've got this range of vegetables on the top. Aroma, color, and texture, smashing. Then, lift this, and you've got the fish, done. Now, six minutes done, and all you have to do is just feel inside there two little lugs and lift that out. Look at that. Look at that fish. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now, just lift up the portion of that fish there, perfect, and slip it onto the plate there. Now, see this reduced sauce that we have? Um, just take a little of that sauce. Now, just don't overdo that. Just, just let it drop down with preferably a little bit of that dill on the top there. Doesn't that look nice? And then, uh, where's the black pepper? Oh, down this end. All right. And a little freshly ground pepper over the top. Great. It's a picture. And it's just perfect. Now, if by chance the, the fish should be just you know, not quite as perfect as that. You've got to be able to press down and each flake will come apart just perfectly. Then what you do is you simply put a lid over the top and let it set for just two minutes, just until it is at that perfect condition of eight minutes. All right? Good. All going nicely. Let's see how the numbers compare. Actually, I've got <coughs> a comparison here with um, a piece of card in a dill butter sauce, which is a classic. And so then we compare that to the classic, and the classic, as always, is in red. And it's very good, you know, 31% calories and fats, a great dish. You know, this proves the seafood thing. This is 780, but we've got ours in at 380, if you're interested. 27 grams of fat, that's nearly half the amount of fat that I need to consume in a day, just on one piece of fish. So this comes down to three, which is a whole lot better, and only one of those grams is saturated fat. So that means I get a very nice, very nice dish with 8% of calories and fat, which is super. 95 in cholesterol in milligrams, 159 in sodium, and five, whereas again, zero um, in the fiber, obviously, because of the rice that I've got there and all the vegetables that I have there as well. So it's a glaze, and it's steamed fish. And, I mean, who would have ever thought that steamed fish was going to be something which would be, you know, as interesting as this could be? There's just a, oh, look, tuck into that, will you? So you see what that's like? Now, you could actually get that out of steaming, you could say, perhaps, without the wine sauce. I mean, it is just excellent. Mm. I can almost feel the pitch of the deck underneath me. <laughs> I mean, it's so fresh and alive. Just that little bit of dill there and the zest of that lemon and the wine, the Chardonnay coming off that plate is just 
looks superb. Okay, want to try it? Um, if, you, if you don't have all that paraphernalia at the steamer, I'm sure you could find one of those Chinese ones a, a little bit of the pipe. Whatever. Thank you so much. And I do love you, and I do look forward to seeing you next time. Okay? God bless you. Keep well.